Honestly, this chapter was really the last two chapters have been fire, and this chapter is no exception. This chapter was more so fulfilling and more so, you know, giving us that sensation of, yes, finally it is confirmed, it is in the manga, we can stop speculating and stop debating and stuff like that. So let's just go on ahead with it. So, cover page is on. Um, Basically, Toshigi playing the villain for some baby penguins. We're playing like Make Believe Hero, and we see Toshigi with the shark on her head, waving the white flag, surrendering to the, the hero penguins with smoke in the background. So, pretty, pretty good, pretty cute. So, we're cutting back to Zoro vs. King on the outside, and so I was calling out the Emma and commanded to stop draining his energy without his permission. And so he gets his stamina back from Emma. And then King uses this as an opportunity to attack Zoro. And King just, now that I'm looking at it, King just basically stands there and doesn't really attack, though. He just stands in front of him. And Zoro's like, dude, what do you take me for? You think I'm not going to cut you? So he uses it to stab. He uses it to stab King. Yeah, he uses it to stab King. And King's just like, looks like he's taking pleasure from it, saying, ah, my dog ran to hit. And then that's, you know, this dude just explodes. Like, explodes. Like, great bowls of rage and fire and stuff like that. And so with that, we cut away from him to. Uh, Sanji versus Queen and Queen has noticed that Sanji was talking to uh, Zoro and he's like oh Power Hunter he doesn't have a chance he's running against King King is a survivor of Lunari and, and they were all supposed to be eradicated and those monsters could thrive in any hospitable environment that the world threw at them so He's just naming off these fans about King's lineage and how they were considered gods and how could they be wiped out. And you know, some of that stuff is like he's divulging. Like Oda's really divulging this and then some of the stuff is like, all right, I'm gonna give you a little. I'm not gonna give you too much because I still want to speculate, right? But like, what's really going on with King and the Lunarians? So this chapter confirms that he is a Lunarian. And then. And after that, we cut back to Zoro versus King, and Zoro was like, Zoro was like he would have been gone if he didn't, if he didn't use armor and hockey a second sooner or a second later. And so he's just questioning like, how's he escape? And Zoro unleashes one of his strongest attacks, the, uh, the Lion Song, and it practically does nothing to King. And King transforms back into his his uh, zone form and just unleashes that. <laughs> oh my God! He brings it back for a second time with that God for second image, bro. He brings it back for a second time and Zoro manages to avoid it. He manages to avoid it, but why does he is avoiding it? Emma starts draining his Emma starts draining the way again draining his uh, hockey away and Zoro actually dodges but gets great gets grazed by it and he goes down and he ends up losing his sword so he starts catching him one by one and he calls out the Sandai he calls out the Sandai Kitetsu and then we get a flashback of him and him talking with um Hitetsu and you know 
he texts her basically letting her know that the sundial was one of his and you get a flashback of how he got the sundial and then we cut back to the present with King you know questioning his all for saving the sword and then he gets kicked again and then he gets killed and loses the other sword which is the water and We get a flashback of that with him begging. I keep forgetting the same, but his old master back at Shimoski Village begging him to let him have the sword and remember us in Kalim. And then we cut from that to another flashback between Hitesu and Zoro. And Hitesu saying, It must be fate that you have the water which emerged from forged by the same man that made him, which was. She mostly calls a bore. And then now we cut to Zoro just now starting to give a real thought about who she mostly calls a bore was and question how did the sword from Wano wind up in the East Blue. And so then we cut back to the present again with King just berating Zoro with twin blade attacks and noticing that he picked up the swords. And then now Zoro's going back to pick up Emma and King is on the strike again and Zoro ends up blocking it but it gets launched through the roof or through the floor or whatever and then we cut back again <laughs> this, step, this chapter was a lot of flashback so then we cut back again with um, Zoro having the flashback with Momonosuke about the, uh, the, the Sinatch uh, word and how Zoro learned from the old geezer then we go back to the old geezer and finally get a face reveal, right? So the old geezer turned out to be the grandfather of Kalina. And he he died already. And so and then we cut to a Tetsu who was just letting us know that he that Shimoski Kozaburo left the country illegally fifty years ago. Basically all the stuff that we got in that SBS of how Shimoski Village was found and how the Shimoski connected to the Shimoski of Wano. It basically is getting confirmed in the manga and in this manga chapter that's what's happening. And so we cut back, we finally get a face reveal with Shimoski. Um Shimoski Kozaburo. And basically it's another flashback that we don't know as well. So we get the face reveal of Shimoski Kozaburo. Also known as the village geezer. And he tells Zoro, he gives Zoro the swords that Zoro had when he was fighting Kalina and when he was facing Mihawk. And those are the same swords that broke. So I love that tie in, bro. Like that tie in is just, that's crazy to me how much I can't even put it in words, bro. But like, so. Basically, he starts explaining what his take on the swords, and that swords is just to cut people down. And anybody that questions that we can never tame a sword or, or you know, stuff like that, which is completely opposite of what he learned from Kyo, not Kyoshi, but I can't, I can't remember his name, but basically his old master. And so, he's basically saying that each blade is like a person, and it's a unique. And it takes a swordsman who is worthy to bend the will and tame the nature of the sword. And you know, he calls people foolish for thinking that that, that cursed sword, call a sword's curse, because that's just how name blades are, and that anybody who said are just weak. And so then he goes on to tell us that the. Uh, that Emma was his magnum opus, his greatest sword ever that he created, and he gave it the name the Lord of the Underworld. And then Zoro, we come back to Zoro, having this realization of, okay, so that's what that sword is, and that's its origins, and that's why it is what it is. And so then, and so then he comes to the realization that the sword is 
the sword is still testing him. He hasn't really fully mastered the sword yet. And so he still got to achieve another hurdle that the sword is trying to put him through. And then he acknowledges the fact that Odin was able to wield the sword without much, so much as a problem from it. So, so, so Odin's like, he's got, so really Zoro's like, yeah, I got to step it up because Odin, if Odin was wielding this without much of a problem, then I got a lot more to live. I got a lot more to do, right? And so, we see King up here now, and Zoro grabs him, uh, and we got Father coming up talking about, oh, let's take Zoro's head. And then, and then Zoro just unleashes a blast of conquerors, how he knocked it out all the Father, having him foam at the mouth. And then King's like, oh, I see. So you've also got kingly ambitions, meaning that Zoro is like, as Congress hockey. And so, with that, we get a flashback from Luffy saying, how oh, are we going to be the world's greatest swordsman? Good, because uh, the king of the pirates wouldn't settle for anything less. And we get this final panel of Zoro saying that he made promises to his captain and his always friend. And that's the end of the chapter. And no break next week, so even we're concluding the fight between Zoro and King or we're gonna after this we're gonna switch back to Sanji versus Queen and maybe conclude with theirs first and then Zoro versus King Dang. I'm surprised that we still haven't seen Rizzo versus Fukuro Kujo yet I don't even think he's even worried about it at this point because right now with what we're seeing this is probably gonna take top priority and if that's the case then I'm all for it man need to finish up these big fights because Wano's coming to an end whether we like it or not it's going to be real soon so <sighs> can't wait to see it bro but let me know what y'all think of this chapter what are your thoughts um honestly this chapter was really 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 good I really loved it and the best part is there is no break so <sighs> my god this is, this is what a time to be alive but yeah, let me know what y'all think. Like the video, follow me if you want to, if not, that's cool. And I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.